Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Hallelujah. We're going to finish. We, we kind of, you know, didn't get quite to the end this morning. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3. Talking about you continue to... Um, Spend time with the Lord and grow, but let's let's look at the importance of spending time with the Lord. Um, we're going down to verse sixteen. Let's pick up in um, I, I I really. This, it's not a long chapter. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before of the holy prophets and of the command of the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Now, let me tell you something. When, when the world sits around and says, Jesus isn't coming back, it's just like it's always been, and, we, and you start going all these different directions, um, the Bible's already talked about them. They're called scoffers. Amen? For this they willingly are ignorant of. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water in the water, whereby the world that was being overflowed with water perished. Now, let's stop here. For this they are willingly, willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old. Here it is. That, that you, sometimes you, you could just read that and go right by it. Yes. The word's true. Yes. The word's true. If you're going to grow and be spiritually sensitive, you've got to know that the word's true and live according to the word. Yeah. Amen. You've got to settle with yourself once and for all, ir uh, regardless, regardless of what anybody says. Because, see, listen, acceptance of the word of God as the word of God is a matter of faith. Because, yeah. you know, people come on and say, well, you know, it's just written by me and they did this, this, and you know, we can, you know, we got archaeological evidence, this. And people, people who want to disprove something can disprove something. Just like, let me, you know, how many know this? That anything that somebody wants, they can go get a poll or they can get a grant and prove that it's true. Right. Now, uh, here's an example. They, say, they try to say that about 10% of the people in the country are homosexual. The truth is it's, between, it's, it's less than three, closer to two. And the study by which they came in with the 10% was done in 1948 by a guy in prison. You're studying prisoners. They know it's skewed. They know it's not accurate. Hello. They know it's not, it's not truth, but they use it anyway because it promotes an agenda. They went and did, got grants in universities to prove that homosexuality was a, um, what you were born that way. When people get grants for, from people for a study, they will make sure they keep giving them what they want so they can get what? More money. They have an agenda. They want to prove something. So polls can be manipulated. You know, uh, I know the, poll, I think the latest poll has it, 42% of people approve of our president. I just don't believe that. Not when only 7% approve of Congress. You know, I just don't, I think, it's a, I think those are skewed numbers, and it's deliberately skewed because of the way the questions are asked. Okay? So, so we, we just live in, you know, there's, there's, you know, and that's natural things. Well, the same thing's true about people who don't like spiritual things. And so they'll, you know, they'll come out and they'll try to disprove the Bible, whatever. So it doesn't matter if somebody comes out and says, you know, we, we have the Dead Sea Scrolls or we don't have the Dead Sea Scrolls. We accept this as the Word of God as a matter of faith. And once you've accepted it as a matter of faith, then it be, has to become your guide. You cannot, you cannot accept this or, or say that this is just a, you know, it's a good list of rules to live by. Because the Bible is not a good thing to live by. It is what we must live by. It's not a pick and choose. Now, the day after church morning service, we, we went over to the cafeteria over at K&W and ate lunch. And there's a lot of pick and choose over there. 
There is. You know? But if you go down the green with the bees barbecue, when you walk in, you don't have a lot of pick and choose. Barbecue. What else I got? Barbecue. Okay? So you don't, you know, you just can't pick and choose what you want. You, if, you, if you went there to eat, you're going to get one thing. Barbecue. Now, the Bible is not a smorgasbord of pick what you want. Now, how many know when you went to work, if you've got a, a job, when you went to work at your job, you didn't have the right to choose what you wanted to do and not wanted to do? We've hired you to do such and such. Well, you know, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Hit the door. It's not hit the road jack, but hit the door jack. Don't you look back no more, no more. All right? <laughs> you know? Or don't let the door hit you with a good Lord split you. Amen. <laughs> Are you here? <laughs> you ever heard that one before, Dick? No. Okay, well. <laughs> you've been, he's lived all this time and never heard that before. Bless your heart. <laughs> We've been saying that in the South for decades. I've heard, I've heard preachers tell it to people in the church. If you don't like what I'm preaching, <laughs> well, glory to God. Now, the Bible becomes a matter of faith, and we live by it. And here he says, they're willingly ignorant of this, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old. In other words, the heavens were created, the heavens stood, the heavens are in their place because of the word of God. God spoke him. Amen. And the earth standing out of water and in the water. Whereby the world that was being overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. In other words, God's word is holding everything in store. Everything's been held in a certain order, waiting for the judgment of God by fire this time. Are you here? But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord, underline this in your Bible. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Amen. Amen. Woo, glory. glory to God. I said the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Amen. Can I say it again? Say it again I said the Lord. No, wait a second. Down. I said the Lord is not slack yes. concerning his promises. Yes. For the dignified, the Lord is not slack in reference to his promises, all right? The Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness. What does it mean by that? Well, think about that now. See, spiritual things are not like natural things. God, through the prophet Isaiah, spoke and said this, he said, my ways are not your ways, nor are my thoughts your thoughts, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, and the, earth, and the rain and the snow cometh down uh, and returneth not hither. Amen? What, what, now see, God says, my ways and my thoughts are not your ways, and they're not your thoughts. They're higher than those. And God says, when they come down into it, they won't return to me void, but they will accomplish the thing I sent them to do. Now, see, men, in this day, we live in such an instant society. You don't even have to wait for your snail mail to get across the country. I mean, when, when Jamie and I were, um, we, we were dating, and I went out to Oklahoma to go to Rama, and she was back here, we would write letters. Well, it would take three to four days to get from Tulsa to Greenville. And from Greenville back to Tulsa with her return letter. So for me to send a question or make a statement and her answer that same statement and send it back could take anywhere from six to eight days to communicate that one thought. Now you pull out your phone and go, da 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 And you get this little bubble over here with dot, 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 and letting you know they're typing it back in. We don't go home on Sunday morning. And get out the cast iron frying pan and pour in the grease. Actually, the old folk used to get out some lard, slap, slap that in the frying pan. Come on now. And get the chicken out and cut him up and batter him in some flour and salt and pepper. And if you wanted the, wanted the fluffy, crusty batter, you dipped it in egg first or some buttermilk. One of the two. Make buttermilk, you know, dip it in there, do the same thing. Well, because you get a wet batter. 
and then sit there for 45 minutes to an hour cooking that chicken, turning it, cooking it for a long time, and then turning it over, and then cooking that side. Hallelujah. Mm, Joe, are you, are you hungry? Yeah. You're getting there. And in the meantime, somebody else is in the kitchen, and they throw some flour and some lard and some buttermilk in, and they mix it up, and they pat out some homemade buttermilk biscuits. Glory to God. Amen. And somebody else has already got the potatoes cut up over there on the, on the and then they got them in the pot boiling. And they're going to they're gonna mash them up and when they get done and pour in some cream, glory to God, and whip it up with some butter, hallelujah, and some salt and pepper, hallelujah. And about two and a half hours later, you're eating your home-cooked lunch. And like one preacher once said one time, he, uh, well, well Daryl Huffman said this. Remember Brother Daryl came here about a year and a half ago? Brother Darrell said this, that's where I got it from. He said, you put a plate down on top of your head, your tongue beats your brains out trying to get to it. <laughs> Hallelujah. No. What do we do? We ride by Bojangles. Or we go to Mrs. Winters or we go to churches. And if you live up north, you go over to Popeye's. That's a long drive to get some Popeye's. Hallelujah. You know, depending on what you want. You want Southern, you want Cajun, what do you want? You know, you got to, you know, or you, you go get Kentucky Fried Chicken, whatever. Somebody's doing all the cooking for you. And, and, and in five, ten minutes, if they're running a little bit behind, ten minutes. And we get mad if they're behind, we got to wait ten minutes. And then we drive out to the house, pull it out, throw it on the table, and everybody pounces off like locust and devours it. So they can run off. And now we're sitting there on our phones texting and, you know, sometimes texting across the table. And uh, are you here? And then nobody's going to wash the dishes. Just th you just go stick them in the dishwasher let it wash them. Mm. Y'all listening to me yet? We're, we are trained. We are trained. How many have been in the drive-thru and had to wait seven minutes and got mad? You go cook that in seven minutes. You can't even go get it in the grocery store in seven minutes. Where our mindset is such an instant thing. Now, some of you are old enough to remember turning the TV on. And it goes. And it's real dim. You know, and then after a few minutes, those tubes heated up. And you had that glorious black and white picture. I saw a picture on Facebook. They had an old you know, uh, tube TV with a box of a Reynolds wrap beside it. And said, uh, like, if you have, know what these two have in common. <laughs> Hallelujah. We get creative. Take that aluminum foil and make long, you know, folds up and wrap it around the, the rabbit ears, hang it out. I say, go, go attach it to your screens on your windows because they were, they were wire mesh. You know, any, stand there like this, <laughs> hold on to the rabbit ears, using your body as a conduit for, for the signal. Turn it off and it would go. How many of you ever sat there and just looked at the, the center dot? It's like, it's okay, it was, it was cool, not temperature, it was neat, you know, and then you walk by, they put your hand in front of it, and you go, pop, pop, pop. you hear all the static electricity going all off. Now, you turn your TV on, and if it's not like, boom, that's too slow of a refresh rate, that's too slow of a refresh rate. I mean, shish. Internet. Bing, 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 bing. You got mail. Now, if it takes 30 seconds for something to go out because there's too much traffic on the net, we're about to ready to throw the, we, I want a faster connection. I am preaching at Brother Bill. I remember one year, we had AT&T World Net dial up. And there was an upgrade I had to do that was 16 meg. 
Now, that would be less, you know, like five seconds now, maybe. That would be slow. 16 meg download. Five hours later, the little bar gets almost to the end and goes, there was a problem with this. <laughs> Please start over. <laughs> You're ready to go outside and shoot the thing with a cannon. We're trained for instant. We're trained for instant. We're trained for boom. And then when we come to spiritual things, if it doesn't happen that way, people start saying something wrong with your faith. Did you know the Bible says that God is the husband of the earth and waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and this, has long patience for it. If we're going to be like God, we're going to have to have long patience sometimes. Y'all hear you going home. See, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness. Y'all put that scripture back up for me. Are you here? See, we cannot get caught up with how the fast the world gets stuff done. Used to be if you're going to be a missionary and you're going to travel to another country, it took you three, four weeks on a boat. Train, mule, I mean mule, cart to the train, to the train, to the port, boat, over there, back, same, reverse the same thing, back out into the bush. Now you, now you can be anywhere in the world to the most remote place of the earth in less than 24 hours. Or pretty close to that. I mean, the remote, that's with layovers. Amen? But the Bible says he's long-suffering. Amen? God is not, you know, and of course this is talking about, you know, people getting saved, but the Lord's not slack concerning his promises as men count slackness. If we're going to be spiritually sensitive, we've got to understand things don't happen on a natural timetable. They don't happen at the speed of, you know, the internet. We want everything faster, 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 faster. It's got to be faster. We don't even want, want to watch our television programs when we're recording so we can fast forward, through, fast forward through the commercials. And let's face it, a season of 24 is only 18 hours. It's a whole lot more fun to watch it without the commercials. You know, because you take out that 15 minutes every show. So, you know, by the time the season's over, you've gotten, you know, you've gotten rid of six hours. I guess you ought to call the show 18. That would just didn't work, does it? Our mind and, our, and, and everything about us has been trained. Quick, 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 how quick, how quick, how quick, how quick. We live our life that way. We, we time things out. I can get to church in eight minutes, all right? So we, we leave nine minutes before church. And then you get the light. Or you don't get the light. You get behind uh, brother and sister Von Schlo of the Von Schlo family. And they were named that because they drive Von Schloish. I got behind one somewhere, you know, uh, I think yesterday, and they were driving 30 in a 45 in a two-lane road where you couldn't pass. Now, I like, I'm kind of like Top Gun. I want to be going Mach 6 with my hair on fire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. But God is not slack concerning his promises as some count slackness. But his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord, now see, he was making reference in this teaching here about the fact that the day of the Lord will come. God's promised it. It's going to happen. But God's promised you things in the Bible. It's going to happen. Just like this principle is true concerning the return of the Lord, any word that God has that we lay hold of by faith is still the same thing. You may think God's being slack, but he's not slack. God will perform his word. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. 
in which all the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth shall be, and also, and all the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conversation? Oh, oh my, I just wish people who, who teach other things would listen to this. Who teach it doesn't matter what you do. Seeing all these things can be burned up, ought ye to be, in, you know, what manner of persons ought ye to be in holy conversation? Conversation. Um, conversation is um, an old English word meant manner of life. Your lifestyle, how you lived. So he says, what ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Spiritual people, people who discern spiritually are about the things of God. They're not about themselves. See, the teachings that are out there in the body of Christ right now that teach you to live any way you want to live and it's okay are about themselves. And the people adhering to that, see, it's not about them feeling good about themselves because they still feel bad about themselves. Yes. Because we know the word of God says if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. It don't take Pastor Ed to condemn you when you're living in sin. Your own heart will do it. That's right, every time. So it's not a matter of preachers condemning people. Amen. People who are living this way are, and are looking for that are all looking for their own thing. Instead, we ought to be looking how to live in holy conversation and godliness. We might be honoring the Lord. Somebody give me a grunt. Mm, yeah. All right. How? What, I mean, and why? Looking for and hasting or hastening the coming of the day of the God, <clears throat> where the heavens shall be on, on fire and shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, according to his promise, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent. That, why? Why should I be diligent? Now, I want to say something. I just get, you know, the stuff that people want to listen to and hear and, and adhere to, it'll hurt you if you don't adhere to the whole counsel of the Word of God. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, how I many was that? The new heaven and the new earth. Be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our, uh, is, is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. So Paul's written some stuff unto you. As also in all his epistles, <clears throat> speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. Stop right there. When we have to be doers of the word, we have to be diligent to search out the word, we have to be diligent of the things of God. You are not going to be spiritually discerning. You won't have spiritual discernment. You won't have spiritual sensitivity if you are not being diligent with the scriptures. And he writes here, Peter writes here and says, Paul writes some things that are, that are, uh, that are uh, what? He writes some of these things, things that are hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable, rest. Rest means to twist. They twist them in a wrong way. And what does it, what does it say? As they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. He's not talking to unbelievers. You read the context, he's talking to Christians. He's talking to believers. He's talking to church folk. <clears throat> now, I love this because Peter, an apostle in the church, recognized, you know, uh, of course, the, you know, the church of Rome calls him the first pope, and, you know, he, you know every, every apostolic authority and all pope, papal authority came down from Peter, which, anyway. We won't get into all, all that stuff. But Peter was an apostle of Jesus Christ and declared that Paul's writings were scripture. 
How do you know? He said, rest as they do also the other scriptures, inferring that Paul's writings were scripture. Amen. <clears throat> and when they twist, because they're unlearned, hello, because they're unlearned and unstable. Well, how do you become unstable? What does the Bible tell us? An un, an, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Well, how are you double-minded? Well, I believe God. Oh, I don't know. I believe, I don't know. I, you know, you're, you're always <clears throat> over here and over there. Ephesians says that we're not to be tossed to and fro. Be no more children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Let me say this. It can even be good doctrine and be tossed to and fro with it. What do you mean? Somebody comes in town, teaches, you know, that, well, I'm leaving, I'm going over there, Pastor. They got something I love, well, they're preaching over there, and you're just running all over the place. You're being tossed to and fro. You're never staying where to hear the whole council. You're going where somebody's preaching that part you like to hear. Now, I met, well, I was, a number of years ago, I was, I was going to a, um, well, I, mean, it's, it was, I was going to a Copeland meeting. He, he had nothing to do with this. It's not his fault. You can't help it when squirrels show up. So we're standing outside. I know those days you have to get to the meeting. Everybody wants, everybody wants to be up front because the anointing was all up front. Now, I've seen people get blessed and healed in the back row. I like being up front. I like being close anyway. Close. I don't have to be on the front row. I don't, don't want to be on the front front row. Now, when I go to Raymond, I like to be on the end of the aisle because I, I get on that pew and I get my arm out there. And, I, and because of the way that on the side, the slight little side sections, they're a little staggered. So I can get my feet out and I'm not, you know, I'm not kind of bunched in. I don't like to be bunched in. You know, it's just a physical thing. It has nothing to do with, you know, I'm a bit closer to the anointing. If Jesus is there, Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit's a manifestation. The Holy Spirit's a manifestation. And he's not just going to, you know, bless the people on the first two rows. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But, I, you know, we got to stand in line and, you know, talking and the people and talk to this woman and say, well, where are you from? You know, she told us where she was from. And, and uh, where do you go to church? Well, I, I just fly around with Brother, Brother Copeland's meetings and I'm an intercessor. So wherever he is is where she was. And you see that before the service. Well, I mean, putting on a show. You can't be stable flying all over the place praying for another ministry and never getting pastored. I believe in prayer. I believe prayer works. I believe it's good to have people praying for us. And, and first of all, if she was true, you, probably, you probably wouldn't know who she was. She wouldn't, I'm an interest. I fly, I, just go, I fly all over the place and pray for his meetings. Good, good ones will pray for him before. Now you go back to church and study Finney's, he had a guy who went into cities ahead of time and prayed things out and then left. Nobody ever knew he was there. I said nobody ever knew he was there. Hallelujah. We got to be stable. Amen. We got to be settled. It's good to pray. But you need to be in church. The Bible says don't, you know, obey those with the rule of You need pastors. I've got pastors. Amen. I, I just, I, I had, me and Janie and I had a really good time yesterday. We had about an hour and a half of Pastor John and Sister Debbie while Nathan was with the attachment. Hallelujah. And just be able to talk about, you know, some, you know, just fun stuff then some of the old days and again and stuff like that. It was just, it was just fun. But I'll tell you, he's, you know, we've, we've always felt this way. Wisdom beyond their years. Anointed and called. Amen. And, and, and appreciative. I, I told him. Uh, about a year or so ago, I was at a church, and he, was, he came to visit. It was a church of another pastor that we, we knew that was in our church that went out and pastored. And I, and I just I said, thank you for giving us a place to, to grow. Thank you for giving us a place to learn. You, the wisdom he had and the, and the calling he had was beyond their years of, of understanding. Even, they may not even understand where they were standing, but they were, they were standing in a place beyond themselves. Hallelujah. We appreciate that. Amen. You know? It's easy to be tossed to and fro and run all over the place. It's easy to go where it's comfortable this week and not and come more comfortable there next week. And then when I was at Raymond, I remember people who would, they didn't go to church anywhere. They just went, they went there where whoever had a guest speaker this weekend. And in Tulsa back in those days, you had them all. 
This week, Billy Joe would have Normal. Next week, you know, FCF would have uh, Lester. That following week, you know, over at Raymond, they would have, you know, uh, Demon Shakarian, you know, and, and over at Oral Rock. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. A Grace Fellowship, they, they'd have this one. It was just a constant rotate. Jerry Savelle was coming in. I mean, Fred Price. I mean, it was us always. People just run around town to one of the meetings, going to a meeting, going to get blessed, going to get blessed, going to get blessed. You got to grow. And growing means you get more than going to Maxi B's every day for your meal. <laughs> Hello? You're going to, and, and I'm going to tell you, and, you, and besides going and getting Olive Garden and going and getting steak, sometimes you have to go get you some good old collard greens. And so you're not going to get that because nobody, you know, or there's a lot of people who don't want their collard greens or their greens. They want all the, 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 the other stuff. And see, when you're in a local church and, you know, and you're sitting under the pastor, the pastor will give you some collard greens sometimes. And give you some stewed cabbage. Amen. Hello? Mm -hmm. Are you here? You're going home. And, and they might be getting T-bone over at the other church this week because so-and-so's in town. But you just had T-bone yesterday. You need some greens today. Now, my grandfather, um, he talked, he, he was sitting with him one day, he got talking about, you know, the baby's dying about two years old. A lot of times babies would die coming out of the winter, right out of the winter, around a lot of times a year and a half, two years old. And the reason was, was because during the winter they couldn't get any of the greens, any of the mustard greens, any of the other kind of greens. And so they were just eating certain things. And so when they came out, there was not enough time. And because they hadn't had the nutrition, they would get sick. This is old days now. This is, you know, way back, you know. Uh, Granddad was born in 1905 or something. I don't remember when he was born, you know. He was so old that he remembers when Greenville, North Carolina had a gate out there where Menji's Coliseum is, and that was where the dirt road began and the gravel road began going into town, and the gate was to keep the cows out of town. Now, I never saw that because it's a five-lane road with a turning lane, you know, <laughs> down through there. Green was way out to the country. Everything's, I can't even find the cow gate around there. But he used to drive, they would drive to town. When they got there, they had to get out, open the gate, drive in, get and close the gate and go on into town. Because you had to keep the cows out. But see, they didn't, get the, they didn't get the right nourishment all winter. And so they would, a lot of times in the spring, they would get sick because they hadn't had time to grow the, the greens and stuff that they needed. Because there was things in those greens that those babies needed. And there's things that, that spiritual babies need. There's some spiritual greens they need that they don't get. A lot of times, and, they, and then it'll cause trouble in their life. Y'all here, you go home. So we want, we want to mature and grow in the things of God, don't we? Yeah. Amen. Yea, ye therefore, brethren, seeing, this, this is what we're after here. This is what we're doing all this to get to this. Wherefore, brethren, seeing that you know these things before. So you've been warned ahead of time. The Bible warned. Paul wrote to Timothy and said, no, you're not. Then the last days, perilous times, or Thessalonians, the perilous times will come. We know that. We, know, we, could, we just shouldn't just blow that off and act like it's not so because we are going to live in a, some kind of special anointed bubble where it won't get near us. The word says perilous times are coming. Why did it tell you that? So you could be prepared. Why did Paul write to the church at Ephesus and say, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to, what? Lay down and let the Lord take care of it because you don't have a care in the world. It's not what he said. He said, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand when? In the evil day. Here he says, wherefore, beloved brethren, or beloved, seeing that ye know these things before. In other words, you've been pre-warned. Beware. Now, you hear people preach stuff, and then you go read what Paul said, and you wonder, how'd they get that? I just, how did they come to that conclusion when you read what he said? Oh, this, in this case, it was Peter, but it's, it's still Scripture. Beware lest ye also. Who's he talking to? It 
Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith, faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He ain't talk, I don't care what people with funny hairdos and skinny jeans on say. He ain't talking to sinners. Talking to believers. And he says, We ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away from with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. I've warned you. I've told you ahead of time. You're warned. There's things out there. There are people who, who are not doing the right things. You've got to be, know this. It's there. It's going to come. Beware. He did not say lie. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. There are, people, there are people going out and saying, I've heard it and seen it float through. There are people out there saying right now, because, you know, Paul's the preacher of grace, that we don't need to listen to Peter, James, or John, because Paul was the preacher of grace, and that's what we're under. Now, you ought to have enough sense, Christians, that if you hear some bozo say that, run! And Karen said, fast! Why? Because it doesn't agree with their doctrine. There's things here like this that disagrees with what they teach, and so we don't need to listen to Peter. How stupid are people? Actually, now let me say this. Let's back up. Verse 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. They're preaching the stuff they're preaching because it's their own lust. And people are buying the books, buying their tapes, sending the money so they can preach it to more people. And the Bible says, be, you know these things are coming, beware. Why is the warning? What is the warning there for? See, we've got to be spiritually discerning. We have to be spiritually sensitive. Why are there warnings in the Bible? Why? Lest ye also be captured or taken away. Lest ye also fall after, you know, I'm trying to say it the way he said it, didn't, you know. Lest you be led away with the error of the wicked fall and fall from your own steadfastness. Christians. We're going to be spiritually sensitive. And when people preach stuff, um, I was talking with Pastor John yesterday. I don't know if you remember, a number of years ago we had a guest, we had a guest speaker who flew in here and flew out. And while he was here preaching, um, he was late getting here or something. They left his Bible and they flew back to get his Bible. It was an hour and a half late. So Pastor Zabowski came to hear him and said he got up and he just took over and kind of ran things while we were waiting for the other guy to get here. And he brought him and said, do you remember what he said there that night? And, and I didn't remember this, but he said, he said, when you get, to, he said, he got up and said, and it bothered him. Of course, we, you know, it bothered my wife too. I found that out when they, he brought it up. Um, and I, I must have either missed it or just maybe looked at it. Or maybe, you know, sometimes you just hear things. But now he hasn't been back and there's other reasons other than, you know, as part of it, you know, I'm not going to pay that kind of money. You know, for somebody to come fly in and blow in, blow up, blow out. He said, people who give to the poor aren't blessed. You don't get blessed by giving to the poor. And that, that became the forerunner for some of the teaching on you got to give up to get blessed. Now, whether you get blessed or not, let me say this. God says if you give to the poor, he'll repay you. He said if you give to the poor, you lend to him. And that's what he said. He said the very first thing that came out of mind was that scripture. He that he would give it to the poor lendeth to the Lord. He will repay. And there's more to that scripture than, than what I'm just quoting. I'm only quoting part of it. Mm -hmm. See, we can get so caught up, and, and I'll be honest with you, as a young, younger minister, you know, and, and you know, I got you know, you can get caught up with, you know, got the big guys in here. And then the big guys rape and pillage your church. And don't leave anything behind. Always. And it's not always, but sometimes I do. But when they leave doctrine, once, we had somebody come here one time. 
that, that this took us out to dinner. We went out, well, didn't take us out. We went out to dinner after the service, and that looked at Janie and said, you're the reason the church hadn't grown. You think they've been back? They ain't been back. Guess what? They've called a couple times. They ain't coming back. Yeah, you're the reason the church hadn't grown. And, of course, you know, she, she internalizes all that stuff and has to overcome that, you know. No, honey, no, that's not true. I don't believe that for a second. This number, you're, you're the reason. What are you talking about? Yep. <laughs> if I'd done that, Janice, I'd have to go visit you in prison. So I did. <laughs> Janice said, you should have called me, Pastor. It's time for us to come to a, to a, a mature faith that we, 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 we don't, just because somebody's got a name doesn't mean that they got everything right. As a matter of fact, we're getting to the place now, a lot of times people got names and they're really wrong. We're getting, we're getting stuff coming out. Um, was talking, we, we were talking about the, the top summit meeting where all the prosperity preachers were called in and, and one of them said, I'm not going because the Lord told me it hurt my faith. That's when he came, came to our church, and I, and I thought, I'm sorry. You can't go around the country and build your ministry using their name, using that ministry's name, and imitate them and say, you know who my spiritual father is, and when your spiritual daddy calls you in, you say, the Lord told you not to go because it hurt your faith. <laughs> did, did that get show up on the screen? It's HD. I mean, the light, I saw, I saw the spray in the light. It should have picked it up. I lost a lot of respect just over the fact they wouldn't go hear what dad had to say, what, their, what they called their spiritual father had to say. Same thing when, 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 you know, I come in and I have to correct somebody, and all of a sudden I'm no longer a pastor, I'm a jerk. You know what I'm saying? If I don't do, if I don't do it the way your way, I'm no longer a pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm a clown. Wait a second, you can't be calling me. I'm not pastor as long as you like what I say. I'm not pastor as, you like, as long as you like the way I handle things. I'm either pastor or I'm not. But see, people come and, and, and as, soon as, they, as soon as they disagree with you, you're no longer the pastor. Wait a second now. We can't, that's unstable. Are you here? Now we got people running around because Peter doesn't say what they want to hear. We don't need to listen to Peter. Wait, us. Uh, so you better back up, pal. Amen? So he says here, you're being warned. Amen? You're being warned. Beware lest you also are being led away with the error of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness. He, he, gets you, he said, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. How are you going to fix all grow in grace? And, and in the knowledge, and in the knowledge, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Growing in grace. Now remember, I, <coughs> honestly, I need to have, I, I need to have, a, there's, a, there's a friend of mine that's a really excellent minister. I, I'd like to have him come in and do a grace seminar tremendous revelation concerning the subject of grace, biblical grace, and in a biblical manner. I'd love to have him come. Just, you know, we just we had to fly him in and pay the hotels and all that kind of stuff. But I'm telling you, it, it, would, it, would, be a, it would be a game changer for, for, for people who are being misled if they would listen. Because he would teach it in a way that would help them understand. I, I think we did a good job a few years ago, but you know, people get mad at you, they won't listen to you anymore. So, Praise the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody else say shunda. I started to say shallelujah. That won't work. All right. Next week, um, I think next week, if that's not next week, it'll be the week after. Uh, it just depends. We may, we may have a, a um, single sermon next week. But if not, it, it, we're going to begin a series coming up called um, um, What Does It Mean to Be Relevant? The Lord's been talking to me about that. 
Because people, and, and I think it's a, it's a spiritually honorable desire to want to be relevant. But I think oftentimes we go to the world to get their techniques and get their definition of what it means. In the same way, we define success according to worldly standards. Now, what, what does the world say is successful? Big, big ministries. You know, well, big, big. In, in the world, big is successful. Okay? So we, we bring that mindset to the church, and what's a successful church? A big church. Got all this stuff. But I found out a guy named Philip, went down to Samaria and preached Christ. The people giving heed to him, both hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. And as much as, the, you know, and he goes on to list all the miracles that took place in his ministry. And when the disciples at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, might lay hands on them, they might receive the Holy Ghost. Now, Somewhere in there, Peter's having this, Philip's having this citywide revival, and it goes on and says this. And he was, and, and he, he was led to the Lord, and he went down into the desert and found a eunuch and went and joined himself to his chariot. And he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And he said, and he began to speak to him, and he said, you know, of whom does the, the, the prophet speak of himself or another? And he began to expound to him at that moment the scripture, got to some water. The eunuch said, you know, what forbids me to be, bat, be, be baptized in water? See, you know, uh, and he said, you know, well, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, da, 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 they got baptized, and he got called away. Now, let me say something here. In that case, God's success model was one guy in the desert. He left a citywide revival to get one guy saved. I said he left a citywide revival to get one guy saved. I'll say that one more time. He left a citywide revival to get one guy saved and got the first Star Trek ride of his life. He was the first one beamed up. Amen. I don't know if they had that and all the they've done about 45 different ways of making them disappear in the you know, transporter room. You know, they, they keep coming up with ways they're supposed to look cool, you know. Isn't that right, Brother Bill? Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. We love you. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address PO Box 7752 Greensboro, North Carolina 27417 If you would like to contribute to our ministry please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button Thank you and may God richly bless you for your giving